What's up, Sassy Gamers, and welcome to Got Our Attention Podcast. This is Season 3, Episode 3. Uh, I'm Zeiss here, your host. I've also got Kelly, Day Drinker ATL, and also Brian, or Phoenix Nova, with me today. How y'all doing? Everything's doing good? We're good. What, up, what else is about the episode? Oh, today isn't our birthday, but it is the 100th episode that we have ever <laughs> produced. Which is one hundred. I, yeah. I actually can't believe that's a milestone. We can get some, some balloons to yeah. come up on the screen. That'd be great. Oh yes. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's uh, the podcast. It was uh, yeah. one hundred. Um, so, cer- certainly, we've produced more than than hundred videos thus far. Yes. But yeah, I think we're like at two hundred videos or something like that. I saw like one ninety <gasps> or something. So what? Another yeah, milestone yeah. is on his way. <laughs> so. I wanted to bring this up because what you count though. Do you count the shorts, which are like cut out of different videos? It's like, I mean, it gets a really gray and dicey area real fast. It is. So have you all ever, and and, and this happens, I'm sure you guys have experienced this at some point, but have you ever like ate or drank something that you thought was one thing and then, and then it turned out to to not be, uh, and I don't mean like, I don't know what this tastes like. So I expected it to be sweet and it is bitter or something. I'm talking like I go in the fridge and I grab apple juice because we have apple juice in the house. Cause that's apparently like a really hot uh, item. Oh yes. Uh, you you can get a, a two-year-old. It, you can get a toddler to do <laughs> anything for apple juice. Anything. I mean, the kid wakes up out of his sleep with just saying apple, apple juice. Like that's his thing. But anyway, uh, actually, lately it's been motorcycle. We'll, we'll get into that next. Uh, so, uh, I I went to the fridge and I was like, I don't have any of the typical drinks that I I like to drink. Like I have like these like fizzy waters and stuff. I don't have any of them. So I'm like, ah, I don't only really drink regular water. I'm gonna drink apple juice because why not? It's in the fridge. It's I paid for it. I mean, he's mm-hmm. not gonna know I took a glass. I mean, whatever. <laughs> Every once in a while, a glass of juice. I like yeah, it. I mean, whatever. So, I usually mix vodka, but whatever. It's fine. So I grabbed it and I poured myself Wrong. a nice glass and made myself a nice sandwich and some chips on the side and sit down and started eating. And I was like, man, I'm, you know, kind of getting dry mouth. I need to take a nice gulp. And I took a serious gulp of this apple juice uh, or so it was called apple juice. And uh, I put it down and I was like, that was not apple juice. That, that tasted like green tea. Like it was <laughs> bad. It tasted like green tea mixed with like uh, brisk, like sweet tea. Or something uh-huh. like where it's like, Ugh. like you can tell it's like fake tea. I, I don't know. Either okay. way, okay. it wasn't happening again. I was like, this, this is trash. So I was like, maybe there's two things that have the happened. apple juice has gone bad. There's two <laughs> things that have happened. We just opened this, right? But the two oh, yeah. things I was thinking is either a, my wife has watered it down already, but I'm like, oh that yeah, still wouldn't seem right. Like it doesn't have produce a that same down flavor. Base. Yeah, just watered down, right? And then I was like, or two, it's some weird like organic apple juice or something that she bought because of the kid. Right. So I go down there and mm-hmm. I look at the bottle and it's like no sugar added, but it's like a lot. Okay. Like it's like a regular brand. So I'm like, no sugar added does not mean it's going to taste like this. So I think no, ultimately it just went bad. <laughs> oh <gasps> I mean, God. Um, you had a gulp of bad apple juice. Oh, that's disgusting. It was, it was, I, I was half something expecting. I never thought <laughs> but experience. I was half expecting like the next <laughs> thing happens is the wife is wandering through frame going, Hey babe, have you seen the urine sample that I left <laughs> in the fridge? The doctor said I had to collect yeah, my urine. I had to and... collect all of it for like a month. <laughs> yeah, it was I mean, it was that odd. that's the joke. That's while well, that's the joke. I seriously thought you were gonna be like it was apple cider vinegar that you Oh god, said. I wish. Oh, now, that, that, that may have been better. <laughs> yeah, oh well, okay, really? Yeah. That's how bad it was. But, Damn. but like if you're expecting it apple juice and you got apple cider vinegar yeah, that's a that would, heck of a shock that would system. be a, i mean yeah i have a massive shock when i take a big old go gulp of my tea when i like sit down at the restaurant and find out it's sweetened tea oh it's that's the worst and, isn't it except the opposite. Uh, i mean it doesn't sound as bad as what it's might gone through tea. but that's terrible mm. uh anyway so that was the tomato. first thing <laughs> the uh the other thing that's been interesting this week is uh, yesterday I was so proud as a parent because I, f- I f- have now played a video game with my son. <gasps> oh, what'd you play? 
so and we've had this game since he was like eight months old. It's on the Fire Stick. It's like some. It's like a, a game. It's like a platform with a car and you like jump ramps and it just collects coins and you try to see Wait, how far you can there's get. a game on the Fire Stick? Yeah, it's just the App Store. Mm-hmm. Just download it. Yeah. Oh, 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 okay, put, okay, okay, okay. Okay. You put yeah. Jackbox games onto a Fire Stick. Yeah, whatever. Oh, shit. Um, I so so I, I, <laughs> we've had this game forever and like he's never really like understood. Sorry, guys. I hear my kids waking up. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he's never really had any like, <clears throat> like he's not really interested in it, but he'd like kind of sit there and just hit the button and he just presses all the buttons and just, you know, it just never works. But for some reason it finally clicked now. Like he was like, Oh, this is how you go. And he's like, all right. Like he says his name. He's like my turn, my turn. And I'm like, all right, your turn. (laughs) So he gets the remote and he starts playing and he actually did a front flip before I've ever (gasps) even done a front flip in this game. What? And he's so excited. (laughs) He's so giddy. Like he like jumps up and like yells and, so excited. And then he actually shares. He's like, daddy's turn. And he like hands me the remote and I play. So we actually got to sit on the couch and they have this like first, oh. first like game together. It was so fun. It was awesome. That's so. awesome. But speaking oh, of awesome, we, uh, we actually checked out a convention this past weekend, uh, Southern fried gaming expo, uh, held in Marietta, Georgia, uh, which is a tabletop. And also I, I would I hate to say tabletop. It's, it's a everything. Type no, it's everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's got it's all, it's gaming. Got, all gaming. All yeah. It's got video games. It's got tabletop all games. Gaming, it's got card games. It's got, you know, the board games. It's got wrestling. It has pinball, pinball games, arcade games. Uh, they had uh, music guests. I mean, there was and there's panels and there's panelists and it's, there's just all kinds of things to explore at this convention. And, uh, I, and me and I, I do want to say just for the very last time, I will say it. Um, I am incredibly <laughs> sad and jealous. I got, I did get the Rona, so I wasn't able to go, but I was, and I was so looking forward to this. I was so excited about going to an expo slash convention with you guys. And yeah. so I am very much looking forward to this segment. Yeah. And, and it, yeah, it definitely was a shame because this was the first convention that we went to where we officially showed up <gasps> as media. <laughs> so we had official was- media badges. Which was yeah. a lot different than normal because obviously like we're we're kind of like on the not the guest list, but like mm. we're you know, we're there as the entity yeah. of Sasquatch. Normal participants. And uh and, and I yeah, didn't realize well, I, I don't think I I knew I kind of realized, but I it was kind of like uh an eye opener for both of me and Brian and me and Phoenix that were there because like it, it was a three day convention. So it mm-hmm. started on Friday at three PM and went through Sunday, I think to like, I think the last panel was at one o'clock, but then people kind of hung around yeah. to like five or six or something. Okay. Um, and much like dragon con, which is held in Atlanta as well. Uh, it doesn't really close because it's held inside a convention slash hotel. So the panels will stop, but people there's tabletop areas where people just sit down and play games and they can sit there and play. And there's a bar and like, you can literally just hang out all night. There was actually a, we talked to somebody that said there was a werewolf yeah. game until like two or three in the morning. So nice. it's like there's just all kinds of stuff going on. But but what we and Brian found out pretty quick was we weren't going to enjoy any of that <laughs> like because we were there. To well, work. <laughs> I mean, we enjoyed it. We enjoyed it in a different way than the standard. It's definitely in a different way. It. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it was pretty cool because, um, you know, we had the ability to interview some people uh, both on the floor and mm. off the floor. Um, you know, got, uh, playthroughs that were done. That was pretty cool. And so we got to enjoy quite a bit of it and, and don't get me wrong. I mean, Friday, first day, we pretty much walked around, yeah. got the lay of the land, talked to people, uh, kind of set up some stuff for the next day. Uh, so Friday was very much, you know, our kind of laid back day. Saturday yes. was, well, well, hold on. Work. Speaking of lay of the land. So yeah. this convention was not so to so talk about size, right? Because um, if you haven't heard of this, um, I believe this is their sixth year that this was uh, this was running now. And obviously it's been growing ever since. Um, but it's it's held inside, like I said, the hotel slash Cobb uh, Cobb Arena. Or not Cobb, Cobb, Galleria. Cobb, no, Cobb Galleria. Cobb Galleria. And uh, because it's a hotel slash Cobb Galleria, 
there's a lot yeah. and convention it's sort of a but it's not your typical like it's, long it's, yeah. building where it has like a floor with everything there and then there's breakout rooms it's kind of spread out a lot better which it's uh there's different rooms different sections you could go to and kind of walk down the hallway and go to some of this other area now there's another room and there's a hallway with a bunch of stuff going on um so as far as safety as far as like you know COVID and everything with what's going on in the world um it was very spread out but i would say i don't know official numbers but it was definitely a lot smaller than than uh, obviously like Dragon Con or PAX. But it reminded me a lot of PAX, except a very very small indie style scenario where you, like you said, we we can meet a lot of people, we could see a lot of things, and and we didn't feel like there was like people just breathing down my neck the whole time. Now Saturday got a little right. bit more busy, but I'll let you continue with that. But just, I just wanted to say like this is this is definitely a growing event that's getting a lot larger. But even that, it's still maybe 10,000 people, I would think, for the weekend. Like, I, I don't know. I, I hate to throw a number out until I see official numbers. But it's uh, it was definitely cool. I, I really enjoyed that. But, yeah, go ahead. No, I mean, it uh, definitely a fraction of the size of PAX. That's for sure. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. Cause, Much more intimate. Yeah. Yeah. A uh, lot, you know, lot, lot fewer uh, exhibitors. Uh, but again, you get to sit down and you really felt like you could talk to the exhibitors, whether they were there doing art um, of different, a whole bunch of different types of art, uh, or whether they had a game. I mean, and the pinball was absolutely off the chain, yeah. seriously, because. So cool. Uh. I like. Packs for the most part, you know, they'll have some arcade games. They have some people to card arcade games into them and you'll be able to play them for free. Very much like, uh, you know, the SFGE, but Southern Fried Gaming Expo had a lot more arcade games than PAX does by far. And they had an absolute shit ton of pinball games. They're all over the place. They're very awesome. Just old classic ones. Uh, I got to see Fun House. It's got the really creepy, nice. like doll head with eyes that open and close. And uh, but then, where else are you going to like have a gaming expo where you can talk to developers of pinball games? Yes. Yeah. So like exactly like we actually met a guy creating his own pinball game. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, cool. so so very cool and 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 uh, you know. I think it was Stern was one of the major um, pinball manufacturers that brought in like what I could assume are brand new tables or relatively new tables uh, between like Rush, you know, the band, um, mm-hmm. Deadpool table. Ah. Uh, uh, there was another another big one like that. Uh, I want to say it was Marvel related, but I can't remember. But it'll oh, show there was, there was a Stranger case. Things, too. Uh, yeah, there was a Stranger <gasps> Things like, one. Like, tent that everybody went in. I didn't want to oh, go too, neat. too, uh, too close. Too to creepy everyone. for you? Yeah. Uh, oh, okay, close. yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> there's like a line. Up. There's like all these people. I'm like, yeah, I'll just stay out yeah. here. But <laughs> well, and then and then probably the favorite was there was this indie pinball manufacturer there. Spooky is that what I think it is? Pinball. <gasps> it's beautiful. It's gonna look really good on you, Brian. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Exactly. Uh, that one's so, mine. <laughs> yes. It's not like my kid. It's a it's nice mine. tank top. It's mine. It's mine. <laughs> Kelly's. Kelly's. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, spooky pinball was there. And you would think like indie pinball, you know, they're going to have like really small stuff, but no, they, like literally they had the Halloween license like, <sighs> like, and they had movie license. They, they had on the LCD, they had clips of the movie playing, you know, Jason Voorhees is there's three different hedges that you go up and like, there's three different Jason's that can like <laughs> peek out behind the hedges and everything. Uh, so, <laughs> Uh, it was cool. And they were selling too. That was the thing. I mean, like you could literally, you had show pricing that you could like, yeah. you could purchase their prototype. Yep. Take it home. Wow. That was there. Not quite now, throwing your back. Granted, 
It's a <laughs> machine. So it's going to set you back nine grand. <laughs> yes. But uh, no, that's, it was, amazing, uh, that, that's something you can say whatever you wanted to do about the size. Uh, to me, I think it's a great size and they're growing. And I think, uh, yeah, no, I felt very comfortable. Like yeah. it was, it was definitely a very, very comfortable. comfortable type of event. So, nice. really and there was always that. stuff to do. There was always stuff to do, but I don't know of another convention or another expo that has that much pinball going on. It was insane. Yeah. Super cool. Nice. So we actually like talk to people, uh, that literally come every year since they started just to play the pinball, just to be able to yep. play these games that they haven't been able to play, you know, on the regular because they're just not, they're so rare. Um, but yeah. pinball is not the only thing that they have. That's also very eye catching. Like, wow, I can't believe it. Um, outside of the developers, outside of the, you know, the panelists and all the other things I said, like the wrestling, they actually have a room that has consoles. And, and I'm not talking about just Nintendo Switch and PlayStation 4 and 5. I'm talking about going back to the Atari, like <sighs> before the Atari. Like <laughs> before the Atari. Like, like, like years Commodore before. 64. <laughs> like, no, like, like, like ColecoVision and Television Age. Ah, ColecoVision, but, no way. Yes, but then, but then on top of that, like Japanese only consoles. Yeah. Oh, that, wow. or, like niche or, or, just these niche consoles that were like kind of out, you know, when it was the wild, wild west and, you know, all, uh, if you pick up uh, an Xbox controller and a Sony controller and you're like side by side, it's like, yeah, there's differences, but yeah. for the most part, they're essentially saying they got two joysticks, they got some type of D pad and they got four buttons and they got two other buttons typically for functionality of menus and stuff is like, and it's, these are very good controllers, nothing wrong with that. But you go back and you look at some of those vintage consoles and man, they didn't know what to do. So they yeah, just yeah. tried anything. There was, there was a console that had a joystick that almost looked like a throttle from a flight <sighs> stick. It had a button on the side and it, it could, it could, yeah. it was actually a full joystick. But it, and it was just this giant like base. And they said, yeah, well, because of the design of all this and that was only one joystick that you couldn't play multiplayer games. It was single player games only on that particular. Uh, OK, yeah. fantastic stuff. But there it was go. cool because you walk in this room and it starts kind of like the timeline. Like you look to your right and it's like the oldest console in the house. And as you progress mm -hmm. through the room around the tables, uh, you could get all the way to like the switch. Cause like, it was funny cause I looked at him and I said, like, what the hell is this over here? And yeah. like, it looks, it looked almost like a mini PC. Like it was this big, like a little, like, like a little box. I'm like, this is like some of those things like GeForce made or something. And we walk up and he's like, no, this is just a switch. But they, they had to create, um, they, they did like 3d printed, like, <laughs> they uh, like mounts. A lock uh, over. so that would, uh. would lock it so that nobody could just take the console. Out yeah. It has the, the <laughs> The, the screen yeah. top pop out. Um, but the cool part well, of this is like you then, can play all of these, right? Like you could sit down mm -hmm. and literally just play whatever game they had on there um, on these different consoles. So there was like all kinds of random games going on. It was just crazy. That's so cool. Well, and it wasn't just vintage consoles. They had a room that had vintage computers in it. <gasps> so much oh so that God. I think they even had like, um, I think they had like a mini mainframe set up. Yeah. On one of them that had terminals wow. there as well. Yeah. Like, it's funny because uh, I thought like vintage computers is when you first walk in and I see someone running like a 386, like playing Doom. I'm like, oh, Apple that's, a, like, that's, that's yeah. a vintage computer. <laughs> Read no, a like, rabbit on Apple IIe. E. Those are the good old days. <laughs> there are some seriously had, old computers. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, I owned one of the computers that I saw on there. <laughs> It, it wasn't the oldest computer in there by any means, that's for sure, but yeah. I owned one of those computers. Uh, and interestingly enough, they had a running on that computer and the computer next to it, uh, Warp OS 2. <laughs> what? <laughs> so, so there was a computer in the yeah, back. That that's a blast like, from the past. There was like, I went back there and it looked literally like a terminal from Fallout. I was like, Ooh. this is exactly where that comes from like i thought that was like a made-up thing yeah. like no that's legit <laughs> no like <laughs> that is an actual terminal computer that they have. Like, the same green and like i mean it was just it was wild oh yeah i could have sworn you 
you've worked on a terminal emulator before. Yeah. That's, it's, <laughs> it's, that's where it came from. Terminal. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Wow. I rem- I remember way back in the day having the, the, the Amber screens. Mm-hmm. Oh man. Oh, and I thought that was so cool because my favorite color is orange. And I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, there was, yeah. there was all kinds Amber of things Green. at this event that uh, outside of just the panelists too, like there was, you know, there's a full, like you said, a full spread of like things going on in the schedule where like, Oh, there's something that you'll watch. Like you'll want to do. They had, uh, and, and some of the panels, the panel rooms, uh, like Mike was saying earlier is like, you play werewolf. They also had, uh, Artemis, um, uh, starship starship uh, uh bridge simulator yeah so oh, it was wow. like it was like you sit down and you're either the, like you know the science officer or the navigator or the captain or the weapons officer and it's a starship bridge simulator and you each That's have cool. different tasks that you have to do in different computers so you could sign up to play that so yeah Neat. i'm telling you really and, and they even had like, uh, uh, you know, a couple of tables and booths there that had comics as well. So nice. uh, one guy was just doing all kinds of art that was uh, very pop culture art. Uh, you know, um, you know, you know, Boba Fett and Darth Vader. And, and uh, I think there was some Game of Thrones stuff there and some other things. So regardless of really your passion, there was at least a little slice of something there for everybody. Oh, very awesome. exciting. Yeah, and then it, and like I said, the tabletop era, like the whole Pathfinder D and D or any sort of like Warhammer, uh, they had all of that set up that you could just sign up or just go and play. Like you just walk in, but hey, I want to yeah. play and just sit down and play. And there was some also prototype stuff that some people had made. Yeah, I, I wow. saw this one spread, and I won't say much about it. We'll reset the video later. But I looked at this and I was like, I've never seen this before. So finally, I stopped after recording. I was like, Hey. uh, what is this? And they, he goes, Oh, it's a game that uh, he developed. And, uh, and it was so detailed, like miniatures and like buildings and, <sighs> and they were playing it. And I was just like, yeah, that's wild. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I tell you, cool. if, if you have not seen war gaming before, you should actually uh-huh. go check it out because, uh, you know, they, they have miniatures and they have all this stuff and they have very sp- specific rules of like, Oh, you have you like, this arc of fire in exactly X amount of centimeters or inches. No, they, they measure with wow. a tape measure. With Real life. Actual, yep. Mm-hmm. With an actual tape measure. And on top of that, because they have these measures, they also go these extravagant, they're, like they're almost like they're making a miniature model for a movie set. It's just That's these extravagant so cool. landscapes with buildings and hills and grass. And, it's it's a map of where your battle's going to be, and if you haven't seen someone play that before, I highly recommend you go out and check you out some YouTube videos of it. And even cooler to go to a place like this, have it set up, and not just watch people, but be able to go up to the table and say, "Hey, this is really cool," and they're like, "Oh yeah, you want to learn here? Come over here. Why don't you take these units? And this is how you do it." Yeah. And and they, because literally, that's cool. No matter where you went. In Southern Fried Gaming Expo, somebody was like that was there, that they were mm. excited and passionate about the thing that's there, and they wanted to share it with you. They wanted to show you. They wanted to teach you. They wanted to get you involved. So you, know, you just cool. felt like it was a big party slash family get together thing yeah. where everybody was super excited to see everyone. Yep. Nice. And, uh, it- and like we said, it's go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, um, so speaking of being cool, like you guys were able to interview several people, right? Yeah. Um, we had, like he said earlier, um, we had some kind of on the spot interviews along with some behind closed doors interviews, uh, which we'll be releasing, you know, in the future. Uh, I don't want to really say anything else other than mm-hmm. that right now. Um, but we have a lot. I don't want to spoil it. Yeah. We have a lot <laughs> of content. Uh, like it was, we, like I said, we worked like we worked from Friday. I, we, I got there at six. He got there at like three. Uh, I got there. We left at like 10 30, I think, um, got home. Yeah. Then the next day we were there at like eight o'clock in the morning, eight 30. Wow. And then we worked all the way till basically seven o'clock at night and then went home, 
And then next morning we're there by nine and stayed there all day. I mean, we, all we did was work. Like we went there, yeah. we yeah. filmed a bunch of things. We interviewed some people. We you know talked to people, you know, just and had experience like playthroughs and things like it was even as a, a working person, like covering the event, it was still yeah. a lot of fun. Um, and, and one of the cool things about this is it is growing and there's a lot of room for them to expand at this location. Like it's a perfect location. Oh, yeah. Cause they're, they actually had like, like overflow tables for gaming and, and wow. they, they, people used it because it was just spread out. Like people was like, Hey, I'll just sit over here and play. Cause it's near the bar. Like why not? So it was, yeah. it was really fun. Yeah. I'd say we shot 300 gig of 4k video. So, uh, we're gonna, you know, spice, splice together the good parts of it. That's a lot of video. Yeah, There's release it over the next uh, really couple of months at this point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I kind of uh, to to kind of wrap it up. Um, I would like to say that yeah, if you're in the Atlanta area, go check it out because it's going to be July 28th to 30th on 2023. Nice. Yep. We'll be there, and uh, hopefully we'll be invited back as media again. Uh, that'd be great. Um, but even if not, <laughs> we're still going to go cause it's still a lot yeah. of good times and, uh, and obviously it's just going to keep getting bigger. So, uh, definitely highly recommend this event to, to even if you have kids, um, you, even if you have kids, it was a Especially very kid friendly yes. event. Like this is not a, cause see, some people have, um, hesitation with dragon con depending on timing of day. Cause oh, you kind of sure. get, there's a lot more cosplay too, which could get also risque at dragon con. Uh, this event, they, there's not a whole lot of cosplay yet. Um, but it's still more of a family friendly environment. Like it's, there's not really, there was nothing really I saw. I mean, I didn't stay the after hours, but I would still expect nothing really too, too crazy. So definitely go check it out next year and uh, we'll see you there. And on that note, give us a few minutes and listen to a word from our sponsor and friends. <laughs> And we're back. So this is the part where we throw in a segment that you're probably familiar with. <laughs> Kelly, take us to your corner. Hi, guys. <laughs> All right. My Kelly's Corner today, for my Kelly's Corner today, so you guys sad. know, <laughs> when I was like nine years old, <clears throat> there were two things. I was deathly afraid of 10 years ago. Yes, exactly. 10 years ago. I was deathly afraid of (laughs) these two things. And that was way more than 10 years ago. Elmo. Okay. No, I mean, I don't think you know how old Elmo is. Uh, The Bermuda triangle (laughs) and quicksand. Wait, at Brian, nine years old, you were Brian, am I right or am I right? Am I right or am yeah, I right? No, no, you, you're right. You're right. Yes. Uh, uh, especially uh, anyone who's played Pitfall. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. I, I uh, can see the sand from Pitfall for sure. Actually, they had Pitfall at Southern Fried Gaming Expo. We, we talked about it for a minute. They had Pitfall, the yeah, 3D and, one from Sega. And, but, no, seriously, actually, no, they like had the, the Bermuda Triangle. Ba- back in the day, the Bermuda Triangle. It was supposed was like, to be a thing. It was way hyped up. Like, I mean, it's still kind of. It was curious but but why at nine years old like why would that be uh, like a there were because no internet yes that was the that was like entertainment like in movies movies and tv shows specifically they were constantly bringing up quicksand constantly bringing up the bermuda (laughs) triangle um so i think i think that the bermuda triangle thing is where i got my love for reading about conspiracy theories came from uh but quicksand uh back in the 60s and 70s quicksand like being in movies and tv shot up is that because like oh, yeah. they didn't have good money for yeah. special effects they're like hey we I, got yeah. sand I, this yeah. can be quicksand yeah <laughs> yeah you've you've seen it mm. at dragon con yes the the recreation <laughs> of um, what was the movie uh, Lawrence of Arabia? It, no, 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 no. It was uh, the Princess Bride. 
Because no, I saw those, and that's what freaked me out. <laughs> Quicksand the no, movie. No, no, no. The one, the one where the where the the main character's horse started drowning in the kicks quicksand. The uh, that wasn't Lawrence of Arabia. No, no, no. It was like Never Ending Story or something. like oh. that. Oh, yes. Oh, um, um, um. Or was it Never Ending Story, or was it? Um, what's the one with Tom Cruise and the unicorn? Last unicorn. That would be legend is Tom Cruise and sort of a unicorn. Uh, the never ending story. So never. Yeah, okay. You, never ending story. Okay. Yeah. Again, the legend is the one with Tom Cruise. Cruise. it's like the Zelda of sort of game or movie, but yeah. Yes. So this theme of specifically quicksand is what I decided I landed on. <laughs> scared the crap out of me. Like so quicksand, I told you sixties and seventies. Y'all have seen my background. I think I talked about this in the very first podcast. Right. Uh, oh my right. God, tour. Right here. Uh, okay. So my background is the theme from uh the Haunted Mansion. So this is the Haunted Mansion wallpaper and in the very first room that you walk in in the Haunted Mansion, it's an elevator and you see just the tops of these people. And then as the room gets lo- taller, or as you go down in the elevator, you, you get begin to see how these people died. And this, well, this one right here is quicksand. Oh. So this is a real thing. So forms <laughs> Wait, of entertainment that had, no, <laughs> well, quicksand is a real thing. I'm going to get into that. A couple of not, the things. Unless you have yeah. to so get out of it. <laughs> well, we'll a, get into that too. So, yeah. We're so not the bondage this week, I, I I I mentioned you know the Princess Bride. Oh my gosh, when they are literally getting pulled out by the rope, and you know the princess is on his back and he's pulling them out of the quicksand. It was like oh my gosh, you can literally die in quicksand. Looney Tunes. I can't tell you how many Looney Tunes episodes had quicksand. Gilligan's no. Island that I watched religiously with my grandparents yep. Gilligan's Island had a lot of quicksand <clears throat> it's cheap man they're sand yeah so <laughs> I decided I I, I, I kind of have my mind made up on uh, the whole Bermuda Triangle thing but we, we may do a Kelly's Corner on that later quicksand I wanted to know really like what's the sign like, can I die in quicksand but so I had to figure out what quicksand is first, right? So most sand is made up of sand and water or air. And in between those grains of sand, here's where I'm going to get all physical on you. Uh, in between those grains of sand is water or air. And the 25 to 30% of that volume is going to be water or air in regular sand. Well, the space between quicksand is 30 to 70 percent water so it looks like regular old wet sand but Mm. it's actually not it becomes quicksand when you you fit into that ratio and there's like a force that causes some sort of like collapse uh particles of sand are per the wikipedia page are kind of like um this actually may be a different article that i read I have lots of sources. They're not like spherical pieces of sand. So they are more like, you know, almost like cards. And that space in between, once you have a force that presses onto it, this sort of collapse, right? So an upward motion of water is typically what creates this space between the particles of sand or grains of sand. And like so you'll find it something like that. Yes. A spring high tide at the ocean, uh, a, a, a water bed of some sort. So you've got that, that push of motion. Never sleeping that's... in a water bed again. <laughs> Learn my lesson. <laughs> Especially after uh, the so, beach, you'll bring sand in the bed. <laughs> right. I'm so, a death trap. so y'all have been to the beach before. I know this for a fact, so don't even try it. And you know, when you, when you get kind of closer to the, the tide, you sink in. That's, right. that's basically quicksand. Okay? okay. 
That's all I was getting. Yes. That's what I was thinking. But yeah. Yes. But when it, you get two massive amounts in, in the spring situation that Brian was talking about, there's much more more water that they can get in. So you can actually fall into a very large amount of quicksand. Or like a thicker layer of quicksand where when we're sit, yes. sinking at the <clears throat> beach, it's it's only a thin it's layer of quicksand just, and the normal sand underneath of it. Exactly. Compacted. And you get that 20 to 30% water distribution. Yep. Well, <laughs> uh, quicksand is also considered a non-Newtonian fluid. Did y'all ever do that science experiment when you were a kid with... Uh, Can you just say that word again? Non what? non-Newtonian fluid. A non-Newtonian yeah. fluid is Very a cool. fluid that does not follow the laws of Newtonian physics. So it's corn, starch, and water is the most common one. And I almost actually made a little solution for you, but is that the I one where you like stop. stick your hand in water and it doesn't like get wet. Yes. So if okay. you no 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 if you if you slowly stick your hand in it. You can you can sink through, but anytime you put any pressure on it, it becomes solid suddenly. Yeah. Oh. Same thing happens with quicksand. You can actually step really hard and fast on quicksand and not sink into it. It becomes like a solid sort of surface momentarily. The second you stop and start applying that slow pressure, you start sinking into it. Yeah, there's so. some great videos, Mike, that you can check that people do a swimming pool of this stuff. And they mm-hmm. just run right across it. And then what they'll do is they'll run back, but they'll stop like two feet short yes. and they'll just stop and they, go, whoosh, and they just sink right into it. It's crazy. What? Right? It is. Yeah, okay. It yeah. Okay. Mike, next time I'm we're hanging out, I haven't seen this. I'm going to make a non-Newtonian, non-Newtonian fluid from cornstarch and water and you will, you, you'll blow, I'll blow your mind. Okay. I thought you were going to say you're going to make a pool of it and run across it. I was like, I'm not no, uh, that's a lot of cornstarch pass. No. And that's kind of messy. So no, uh, <laughs> unless you got the funding through SAS gaming, hell no. Yeah. It's not like you can just drain this stuff either. The cleanup yes. is, a, is, it's a uh, bit, <laughs> we're going to have to let it evaporate and yeah. Yeah. I'm good. You still got the cornstarch. Yes. So can you actually die and succumb to basically drowning in quicksand? I would say yes. Yes. Brian, what's your your guess? It's water you're saying, right? I I would say it depends on how you react. Okay. More than anything else. So you're both kind of right. Well, Mike, you're wrong. You can't, you can't actually totally drown. So <laughs> quicksand. So, right. <laughs> right. So the density that uh, you, you, you would have to be more dense than the quicksand itself I to know, actually I dense sometimes. <laughs> oh, I couldn't say it fast <laughs> That's enough. That's true. That's pretty dense. Beat you to it. Yeah. You actually have to be more dense than quicksand to actually fall through completely in quicksand, the human body is one gram uh, per cubic centimeter. Quicksand is two grams per cubic centimeter. So you would okay. actually only make it like basically waist deep. But it, the more you like, because it's that, that, you know, non-Newtonian fluid, you know, you, you, the more, if you get into it and you're like, oh crap. And then you try to st- struggle, you can't get out. And that kind it, of you, like what you were talking about, that collapsing effect yeah, too. Yeah. So we're and you part get, of that non-Antonian thing. Yeah, you kind of get stuck, right? You're still really only going to get stuck halfway down. If you get stuck in quicksand and die, the reason you die is actually because of things like starvation, high tide and drowning. Yeah, high animals. Tide, yes, <laughs> animals. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look, um, hypothermia. Like eat your eyes out. Yeah. Hy- hypothermia or or heat stroke. You know, I'm stuck in, in in this quicksand and it's really effing hot. And yeah, I can't get out. So ways to get out of quicksand, though. This don't say I never told to you down. anything. Go the Lay down. <clears throat> Lay down is one of them. So you know how like when you're like floating in a pool on your back. Kind of try to do that and make very slow movements and get your legs up. That's how you can get out of quicksand. 
very mm. tiny, slow, deliberate movements and which lay back you can get yourself out. Yeah. Which, so, which almost no one's going to do because they're already panicked and scared. Yes. To death you are anyway. in fucking quicksand. <laughs> yeah. So Not there's your education on quicksand. <laughs> Sweet. Don't worry, you won't die because of the sand. Well, You'll just die for <laughs> Yeah. Vultures, coyotes. Oh, <laughs> so I think this has a lot to do with what you've been playing lately, I feel. But you want to tell us what you've been playing? <laughs> well, I did get to my Think, thankfully, I, I do feel I'm very grateful that my COVID symptoms were not really that bad. And I was more tired than anything. I had a really sore throat, but I took like a lot of naps. And I had to be isolated from my family because I didn't want my kids to get sick and I didn't want my husband to get sick. Well, that kind of left me open to what else am I going to do? I did some mini making. And I did some game playing. <laughs> so I started playing this game that I had downloaded already, hadn't gotten a chance to play called I Am Fish. And I played it on console. You can play it on PC as well. Uh, it's included with Game Pass on Xbox. Awesome game. If you are like me and you like puzzly games, and it's, I wouldn't call it a narrative game, but there is a storyline to it. So you are in this fish tank with your friends. You've got three friends and you suddenly get separated and you are initially the goldfish and you are put in this fish tank that thankfully is completely spherical. <laughs> and you are trying to make your way to the ocean. So as the goldfish swimming around in this tank the game mechanics, it's its tough. You are, I mean, inertia, right? You, you keep going and then you have to stop yourself and slow yourself down and go in the opposite direction. And you are swimming in water. You're swimming in this, uh, like I said, the tiny little, the spherical fish tank. You are swimming. You get stuck in somebody's mop bucket and you're trying to make your way. And then the jar Oh my gosh. Once you start mastering this little spherical fish tank, randomly you find yourself stuck in this jar that has a whole, like instead of being able to go in any direction, now you have to figure out how to turn yourself and then go forward, but not turn yourself again. You're on planks. There is one bridge and it's set in Australia. You're in this, you go through this, the bridge that's under construction on the bottom and it seriously triggered my fear of heights. I was like, don't oh, look down, don't no. look down, don't look down. Uh, so once you get to the ocean as the goldfish, you start calling your other friends. You're like, I miss you guys. I'm here. And they, so like you get to pick. Or? So they're, yeah, no sparkly, your, your sparkly <laughs> golden uh, uh, scales Sonophone. shine bright and they go, they see it. So then you get to pick which other fish you want to be. And, oh, well. you know, to, to finish the game, you have to play through all these other, all the other fish. I yeah. am now on the piranha fish and it's goofy looking, <clears throat> very goofy looking game mechanic. There is that you can grab onto things and go, Rawr. <laughs> that should be a, a, a gift Rawr. and uh, pull down things, open up stuff, uh, crack open pipes, things like that. The other two are a uh, uh, was a flying a fish, flying and fish, and the then a puffer fish. Puffer fish, yeah, yeah. Although I, I really can't forgive this trailer when it said there's no need to be a brain sturgeon. <laughs> it is pretty cute. There it are. It looks pretty fun. Like, it's I'm kind it's, of like. Hmm. It's actually a lot of fun. It, it does. So there are when you when you die. Oh my gosh. So your, you, your little glass fish tank will break and then you're kind of like stuck there. There is a portion when you're trying to swim from puddle to puddle. And so you're like trying to, you shoot yourself out of the puddle and then you're like kind of flopping and you're start to die. And then you 
barely make it in the water in time and then you're back. So <laughs> it's a little bit sad seeing this fish die. There is polluted water that you have to swim through and you'll get stuck in <laughs> in syringes or plastic cups or the dreaded six pack, you know, rings, plastic rings. So it's super cute, a ton of fun. I did take some screenshots on my console that I haven't pulled back over yet. So hopefully I'll be able to, to maybe even write an article about it, Mike. Hey. <laughs> Hey yo! Super cool. It's a yeah, lot of fun. Use, Highly recommend. I may Highly have to recommend. Or use your capture card. Yeah, yes, that's what you should do. You should use your yeah. capture card. I am real. I, let me just say, I am awful at this game. Oh, one thing that is very that's even that I really appreciate about this game. Oh my gosh, no! You will see me die over. It, it gets very frustrating. <laughs> Trust me. It's see, like a uh, video card. One thing I know we've talked about it on a lot of on uh, a couple of other podcasts. Uh, when you get to a point and you can't beat a boss and then you've paid 60 bucks for this game and like you're not, you're not making it through. It's kind of like a waste of money. They do have a, a couple of options where you can, or specifically move to the next checkpoint. If you find yourself, and I did do that once. If you find yourself in a situation where you're like, there is no way I'm getting away from these fucking seagulls. The seagulls, man. The seagulls. <laughs> um, I, you, you will. You know, I, 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 I did like skip to the seagulls. <laughs> All yeah. the seagulls, man. Great band. Did though. you try Great running? <laughs> you can't. You can't. That's the problem. That's the problem. You're in a freaking jar and the seagulls keep coming through. And when you're like me and you're very particular in your slowest molasses, uh, the seagulls got me a couple of times. And finally I was like, fuck this done moving on next checkpoint, please. <laughs> nice. So that is, uh, is, is very helpful. So there's a game that I've been playing and I know that Kelly has also been playing and you probably played way more than me. Cause I, I oh, no, have only played it. maybe an hour or so of this game so far, but another game on Xbox game pass uh, included. Uh, this is a game that's been out for a little bit now. Uh, but it came to Game Pass recently. And I'm talking about Power Wash Simulator. Now, Love if you it. don't know what I'm talking about, it's literally the name. <laughs> uh, you have a power washer and you have different attachments and you have a little business you're starting up if you're doing the, the campaign mode. And you're just cleaning, cleaning things. And, <laughs> and it's a very chill game in the sense of like just spraying things until they're finally clean. So seeing something go from complete, just utter dirt to like actual back to restorate, like restoring it back to what it was supposed to be is, is really good. Um, the cool thing about this game, and I haven't been able to do this yet though, is uh, it's actually up to six players co-op. So a lot of these levels are really big. Like you like have a whole backyard to like cover and everything is just destroyed. Uh, but you could get like, you know, five of your friends and you guys can kind of just tackle like this as like a job. Like you guys go in like, all right, we're here to clean this up. We're going to go in, we're going to do this. And, as you can see in the video, some people just like to play tic-tac-toe or draw, you know, penises on the ground, whatever. Penises. Um, oh, yeah. But uh, but yeah, it's it's a really chill game. Uh, and then the fact, like, it's kind of in the same vein of, like, you know, House Flipper that I've played before uh, and a few others. But it's what's different about this one is it allows, it actually has the co-op, the feature that we all wish those other games had. And, yeah. and this one does have it. So, um, so far, it's been a blast. Uh, I've I've enjoyed it. I'm definitely going to keep playing. I can't wait to play with like Kelly and some others. But uh, how so how much have you played of it? I have literally just played the very beginning. Uh, I did download it to my PC though. I was playing it on my console, and I, I keep saying I feel like I can constro- control my stream better if I use my my mouse. So <laughs> that's why I downloaded it on PC and. <laughs> I know I just need some flow max and I'll be fine. Right, Brian. Uh, yes. But I, I well, do. Th- yes. <laughs> I do think that I'll, I'll, I'll enjoy the game more playing on my PC with my mouse. Yeah. So we'll have to tee that up and, and play it sometime. So it'll be fun. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing I've been playing and, and it's Minecraft, but it, no surprise there, but uh, I decided 
I played a automation uh, mod back in the past. I think Phoenix had spun up a server and had some automation and some magic and stuff and had a really good time with that. And I get those itches every once in a while where like, I want to do an automation game where like I can just automate and make a cream for that. There's <laughs> man, there's not enough games that do automation, right? So no, I mean, there's, there's satisfactory. It was really good for a yes. while. Um, I'm just not a fan of Factorio uh, just because of the, the, the aesthetic of it. But I know a lot of people really get into that. And I really wish I were because I think that would be a game that has a lot of the good automation. Um, but there's a lot of other ones that I've played that just it's fun for a little bit, but it doesn't really give me that itch to like want to go back and play it. Um, but recently I had a friend of mine playing uh, the mod called uh, All of Fabric 5. And it's the latest version of all of fabric, which is basically encompasses all of the, the best mods that are out there. Like probably like, I don't know, 20 mods or so uh, with all these different tech trees. So there's a magic tree. There's the automation tree. There's like three different automation trees. Um, there's like all kinds of different, like all these different magic trees. Like they're all like branched out inside of each one of these. And uh, so I decided to, you know, I was like, you know, I'll just spin up a server and just pay for it. Whatever. I'll play it just for a month or whatever. <laughs> probably gonna keep going but the point is it's been a lot of fun um i have gotten to the point where i've automated everything to now where i have an assembler um and i don't even know what Ooh, it does wow. yet like i've seen what it does <laughs> apparently but i can't use it yet because i need like actual electricity now and i don't have that yet so um but it's just it's been really scratching my itch if you're into the automation side of like building and you're okay with playing a game like minecraft uh, all of Fabric 5, definitely check it out. It's the only mod you need to download. So uh, if you want to play it by yourself, you just go to Cursed uh, Forge, download All of Fabric 5, install it, and then uh, you'll be able to run that on your own home server uh, or a home home PC. And then uh, obviously you'll need it for joining a, a server online. But it's been a lot of fun. Really having a blast with that. So it's scratching that itch. So go check it out. Very cool. So I've been playing... Soul Iron Tail. Oh, and, yeah. uh, it's it's a fun little game. Yeah, it looks looks so five cute. bucks. It's like five bucks <laughs> on Steam. Uh, and it's you play this like fox like animal uh, with this big tail, and the end of it's kind of like this like this curved iron shield, basically. Uh, that you can either block with, you can do an attack with, you can slide on it, do. Like I, I commented, I, I believe even during our interview that it was like a better Sonic in some yeah, way. You did awesome interview, by the way, if you and, haven't uh, checked it out, if you haven't, go check, check that out. little link up there in the top corner. Uh, you'll be able to see the interview at some point. Oh, uh, hold yes. on this one. Uh, it's on that side. I can't get there, but this, this one right ask. here. Yeah. Yeah. This that one. One. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. So, uh, yeah, we did do an interview <laughs> with, uh, the, the creator, the soul, creator of soul iron tail <laughs> uh, and it's fun uh it's it's not a very long game uh, i have not finished it yet to be fair uh it looks like it's got some replayability in it because there's different paths you can kind of go down it's it's a 2d scroller uh with uh, a lot of momentum and a lot of like collectible kind of things that you kind of grab on the way uh it, it it's definitely a cute aesthetic. Um, I wouldn't call it eight bit, but it's, it's you know, maybe a 16 bit is probably a little bit more accurate. The so uh, aesthetic. Um, yeah, it's super cute. Mm. Uh, and, and it's, it it's makes me happy speedy. watching it. Yeah. yeah. And, and like even the battles are fun and yeah, it's, I'd say go check it out. Uh, it's five bucks is totally worth it. So. And go find the bowling alley. Please, dear God, someone find this bowling alley. <laughs> yeah, there's there's, there's a that we can watch there. There's a uh, secret <laughs> Easter egg somewhere in it uh, that there's a bowling alley that you can find. Uh, and my my money is on the idea that it's not something that you could just normally do through gameplay. My money is that, like you have to put in a specific code at a specific place to be able to unlock it or something like that. But um, maybe not even during the game. That's just a theory, man. Yeah. Nobody knows. It is just a theory. <laughs> true. It's very true. Somebody will find it, hopefully. Yes. Somebody will find it. It's going to drive me crazy. <laughs> well, that's been uh, our episode for the day. So we appreciate you guys listening to You Got Our Attention this week. Uh, obviously, we're going to 
keep churning these out as much as we can. But uh, it's only because of people like you listening to our podcasts or watching this live on YouTube. Or not live, but watching us on YouTube. So we definitely <laughs> appreciate that. And again, make sure to, if you're watching this for the first time, make sure to click that like and subscribe button. Uh, and you can also hit the bell if you want to. That'll let you know when we release new content. Uh, we have a lot of new videos coming out over the next month, uh, like I said, from Southern Fight Gaming Expo, from all the coverage we did there. So feel free to come back and check those out. We've talked to a lot of really neat people, and we can't really wait to, to get that stuff out to let you guys see. So uh, Also, we have a Patreon. Uh, if you're interested in helping us support us a little bit more, uh, help keep, uh, keep seeing the content we're making and you want to see more of it, check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash sasgaming. Uh, you can also check our website, sasgaming.com. Uh, we release some of those blogs and uh, I just put out a new Mike's mixtape on some uh, some songs I was into recently, so check those out. But, it's on my on my playlist, actually. Nice. So, so mm-hmm. until next time, we uh, we love you guys, and we'll see you guys next time. See you. Bye. Cool.